Okay, hi there. There is no bigger topic to look at than income inequality. So in this short synoptic revision video, we'll take a look at some of the main micro and macro policies that might be used to reduce income inequality. Now, the widening gap between rich and poor in terms of income has highlighted the need to understand the causes of relative, relative poverty and also to think about the suitable policies that might help to narrow the income gap, both to analyse them and, crucially, of course, to evaluate them. Income inequality is a measure of the extent to which the distribution of income is skewed between households. Two essentially main measures. One is the Palmer Ratio, uh, which takes the income of the top 10% of the population and divides by the income of the bottom 40%. And, of course, the Gini coefficient, whose coefficient ranges from zero, where there's perfect equality, to one perfect inequality. Quite important in an exam to be really clear what type of income we're looking at. I'll focus on disposable income, which is basically the amount of income people have adjusted for direct taxes paid and welfare benefits received by a household. Essentially, it's the amount of money that people have available for spending and saving after direct taxes and welfare benefits have been included. Median disposable household incomes in the UK just over £27,000 per year. Relative poverty, of course, is a measure of inequality, and people are in relative poverty if their income in a given year is below 60% of median income. So median income in 2017 in the UK, £507. 60% of that is £304. So people in areas, uh, basically areas 1 and 2, have a or uh, fall into the relative poverty zone, if you like. So this topic video will just focus on some examples of micro policies that you could use to reduce income inequality and macro policies. And typically in an exam, obviously, you'd build two main points. So there's a big selection here that you can choose from. Well, micro means focusing on individual households, individual markets, individual aspects of the economy. The minimum wage, in a sense, can be seen as both a micro and a macro intervention, particularly if it's a national minimum wage. But essentially, it's a labour market intervention, so I think we can treat it as a, as a micro policy. So there's a big debate, obviously, about whether the minimum wage should be going up, should there be a, a, an increased living wage, and the, the scale and the extent of, of minimum wages for different, different people in the population, including younger workers compared to people aged over 25. Another good example of a micro-intervention would be to provide tax-free childcare, which the UK government's done, to improve, well, to reduce the cost of childcare, <coughs> pardon me, and to improve female labour market participation. Another micro-aspect is to improve the housing market, uh, maybe house building programmes or uh, cuts in VAT on new house, house, housing developments. The idea is to make housing more affordable, uh, both the cost of buying and also renting a property. That would also help to improve disposable income, essentially, because for most people, the cost of a mortgage or the cost of your rent is, is a huge part of your monthly budget. Bring also in some, some market structure economics. So policies designed to increase the contestability of markets could bring down real price levels. And that, again, helps low-income families whose budgets are squeezed by expensive utility bills. Improved access to universities for students in poorer families, perhaps a, a higher maintenance grant um, in a reformed tuition system. Again, that can be seen as a micro policy and you can, I'm sure you can build a chain of reasoning as to how, how this would work. And also you can go into financial economics if you want. So many, many people in low incomes actually pay higher interest rates on their debt, on their on their credit, if you like, compared to people on you know in higher levels of income. So perhaps the, the cap on interest rates on payday loans and unsecured credit can be seen as a microeconomic intervention designed to help families dependent on unsecured credit who often pay outrageous levels of interest rates. Do you see what we're seeing? See what we're trying to do here on the micro level is to target particular micro issues, female, female labour market participation, the cost of housing rents, access to university. Those can be seen as micro policy interventions okay on the macro side of course you're going to be heading into some familiar territory i hope so typically governments committed to cutting inequality will use progressive taxes on income 
So in the case in the UK, the marginal rate of tax goes up from zero to 20% to 40% to 45%. So that the average rate of tax therefore rises with income. People on £100,000 a year are paying substantially more income tax than somebody on £20,000 a year. So the, a government could decide to make the tax system more progressive, perhaps have a higher marginal rate of tax. The other thing they could do is they could cut some regressive taxes. So typically excise duties and VAT to a lesser extent, they do have a regressive effect on income distribution. So therefore, if you cut some of those taxes, that might have a, a similar effect to making other direct taxes more progressive. Some economists argue that we should increase, we should introduce a progressive consumption tax. In other words, the idea here would, that, would be that luxury items, and of course that would be open to interpretation, but luxury goods and services would be taxed more, more heavily. So, for example, a much higher rate of VAT on luxury yachts or what have you, and, and designer clothes and cars, etc. Again, this is an idea that some people in the States are thinking about um, to try and tap into the very high levels of consumption amongst the ultra-rich and uh, use that money to fund <coughs> government spending. This links to the next point about government spending on public and merit goods, that uh, typically governments raise tax and then they invest that money on public goods, merit goods, education and healthcare, designed obviously to improve human capital. A lot of interest at the moment in terms of cash transfers. Some people now arguing for some form of universal basic income. Now, universal basic income, or UBI, is basically where the government will provide a certain amount of income per week to everybody, let's say over aged over 18, with no strings attached. Uh, the latest proposal from an economist called Guy Standing is that there should be a universal basic income of about £48 per week for all adults in the UK. So increasing, ramping up the scale of government welfare cash transfers, perhaps targeted at poor families or a universal basic income could be a policy option. So on this slide we've got lots of policies here but what I'm trying to show you is the divide, the distinction that you'll need to make in a synoptic paper between a micro policy and a macro policy and you can choose your ground and then build and develop your argument. IMF last year actually published a report saying that high levels of inequality can be a barrier to growth in advanced rich countries. And actually, they also argued that raising taxes at the top end for richer households wouldn't necessarily harm economic growth. And when the IMF is saying that, then you know things have changed. So what are some of the evaluation points that you could put in in terms of your policy interventions? I think the key evaluation point is whether your policies are seeking to change the distribution of original income. That's income that people earn before uh, the tax and benefit system gets, gets uh, into play. So, for example, an executive pay cap, limiting pay and earnings of the, of the chief executives, can be seen to try to address original income. Uh, a minimum wage in the labour market might try to lift the original income of people in fairly low paid jobs. Or are you aiming to reduce the, the final, the eventual post-tax and benefit inequality levels? Or should you try to do both? One obvious, one obvious issue evaluation point you can bring in is that if you go for a more progressive tax system, then the higher top rate taxes, the marginal rate top, uh, top taxes might lead to increased tax avoidance, perhaps increased tax evasion, possibly a, a brain drain of highly skilled, highly, pe highly paid people. The risk, obviously, is that total tax revenues could stop rising or even fall. Uh, the Laffer curve diagram could, purports to show that tax rates beyond the optimal point can, can reduce revenue. And of course, if the government then gets less revenue from taxes, they then have less to spend on public and merit goods. Welfare reform is often used to make the system more equitable, but as they become more complex, they, they create disincentives to work and earn extra income. So you should be familiar with the idea of the poverty trap. Now, universal credit is designed to simplify, bring five or six benefits together into one payment, 
but I'm ho hopefully you'll be aware there have been major problems in implementation in the UK, including more people reliant on food banks. And then they're kind of the wider evaluation points. You know, what are the outside external forces driving changes in income inequality? And the extent to which policy can realistically uh, address those, those deeper, deeper, if you like, tailwinds. Globalisation, <clears throat> technological change may well be increasing the divide between rich and poor. So should we be looking to more radical solutions such as a universal basic income? Crucially, when you're evaluating any policy, think about the three E's. You can't go wrong if you do this. One, does a policy work? So is a minimum wage an effective way to reduce income inequality? Are higher marginal tax rates an effective policy to reduce the gap between rich and poor? Secondly, are policies efficient? Do they improve the resource efficiency? Or perhaps do they come into conflict with other objectives of policy? And thirdly, what is equitable? What is sustainable? Are policies fair? Who are the major winners from a policy? Who are the major losers? How, how much of a change in the distribution of income do you think is optimal and or desirable? That's a, that's a kind of a value judgment point which you need to come to at some point. Final point really is that income inequality in the UK is actually falling over the last 10 years. There has been a, a, a modest fall in the Gini coefficient. It's gone down to 0.33. So <clears throat> despite the recession, uh, despite the rise of working poverty, uh, despite the squeeze on real wages for millions of people, actually the Gini coefficient in terms of uh, original and disposable income is no higher than it was 10, 15 years ago. So, and hopefully an interesting point of evaluation you can use in your answer. OK, thank you for joining in this, uh, this synoptic video on micro and macro policies to reduce income inequality.